In today's episode, I'll be teaching you how to pull and repair dents in your vehicle using body filler and how to properly prep out those panels for paint. So let's dig in and get started. So we're going to remove the tail light. Um, any trim that we need to remove. Darius is over here removing the trim on the tailgate. We'll remove the emblems. So let's get right into it. We'll start by pulling out the dents on this bedside. We're gonna use this 80 grit Rolock disc and we're gonna just grind this dent in the center so we can pull it out with the G90E. Okay, this is the tool we're using today to pull out those minor dents. This is called a spot G90E. It's a spot welder that pulls out dents. So basically what you have, basically you have a ground here that you ground to the body of the vehicle and then you weld this tip onto the low area of the dent and then you can slide hammer or pull the dent out with this tool. This is relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other tools that do the same thing. And I've had this tool for a couple years and it, it's working out beautifully. So I'll just ground this right here. Find the low area. I'm probably just gonna pull on this. So we'll weld it and then I'll just pull it a little bit. It's really not gonna take much. That's basically it right there. So in some of these areas, I'll be pulling the center of the dent and then I'll tap down with the hammer a little bit of a crown that's around that dent. So when a dent's created, it pushes in the center and it raises the metal around that. So you wanna pull out the center and tap down those crowns if you can. On this dent, I pulled out the center crease, and now I'm gonna take my flat spoon and a hammer and flatten down those crowns around that dent. Okay, so we got some 80 grit on this orbital sander. You'll wanna, we wanna feather edge this out, and then we'll put a skim coat of filler on it. We're gonna hit this little ding, you can't even see it, right here. I'm just gonna sand this a little bit. I'm just gonna sand this little thing, you can see it. And then we'll feather edge that out as well. And we'll use a little bit of U-pole filler to straighten it out. When I say feather edging this paint out, so we're feather edging this paint out, what we're doing is we're gradually sanding the layers of paint so there's a good transition from the metal to the paint, so it's a smooth transition, okay? So we wanna feather edge those back. The way we do that is I like to tilt, instead of laying this just flat, I tilt it. So here's the surface of the panel. I tilt it just a little bit. So I'm using the front edge to work that paint edge back. I'll show you. Okay, so that's all it is. You can see the layers of, basically there's a primer and then there's a paint and a clear coat. You can see those layers here, but that's what feather edging is. We've got a smooth transition. You can see how gradual that transition is from the metal to the original paint. I don't have to do that on this case, but I like to feather edge it out a little bit um, before we apply our filler. I went around the edge just a little bit larger so we can put our filler over properly sanded paint. 80 grit is the proper way to sand paint if you're gonna apply filler over it. Now, not all fillers can be applied over properly sanded paint. You wanna check the technical data sheet on the filler you, you're using to see if you can apply it over properly sanded paint. 
sand out the rest of these and then we'll apply some U-pole filler. So the filler we're using is the U-Pole Lightweight Gold. This is almost empty, but we're gonna finish this up and then we'll switch to a different type of filler next time. I really like this stuff. It's smooth, easy to use, easy to sand. So when you're mixing up filler, you wanna use 2% hardener or 50 to one, I believe it is. We're just gonna, it's pretty warm today, so we're not gonna need a ton. So that amount will do for our filler. We'll mix this up. We'll fold it in until it's all one uniform color. Mix this up real quick. Want to press out all the air. If you stir it, sometimes that introduces air and you want to avoid that. That'll cause pinholes, uh, which is air, air pockets in your filler. So then when you sand it, those air pockets will show up and then you'll have to address those, do a little bit more work to take care of those. So we try and eliminate the air as much as possible. You see it's changing color. I'm pressing it out to press out that air. All right, this is ready, let's go over here. So we just, I'm gonna use this small spreader for this spot. It's just gonna take a small amount. When you apply it, you want to press it in. So I'm going to get a little bit on my spreader here. And we're going to press it in. Now there was some kind of some wavy areas over here. So I'm going to take care of these while I'm here. Basically all we need there, we'll let that harden up. There wasn't really any dents outside here, so I'm just gonna keep it on this side of that body line as much as possible. That's it. Okay, so now we're gonna sand over this, rough this in, smooth it out with some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna use the DA sander. Now you can use a block if you don't have a DA sander, but we're just gonna hold the DA flat, smooth this out, and then we'll use a block. Here's a quick tip if you're new to using body filler, it's something I see time and time again from beginners. They tend to remove too much filler when they're blocking or sanding. So we're using the body filler to straighten this panel and level it out. If you remove too much, you're just gonna have to reapply and then it turns into a vicious cycle where you never end up getting that panel straight. So keep that in mind when you're sanding and blocking. Guide Coat is a great tool to use to check your body work to make sure you're getting your panel straight before you apply your primer. Now, I'm gonna use some 180 grit. Now, I'm gonna use a new block that I have. Now, this panel has a contour, so it's kind of bowed. It's not perfectly flat. So what I'm gonna do is this is a adjustable block here that I can adjust and you can see it's it's making a contour, so this will lay flat against this panel. Very handy, we'll see how well it works. I just, I just purchased this. So we're gonna try this out a little bit. I've been kind of itching to test it out. So we got a nice little curve in this block. 
I'm gonna, and it's laying flat against the panel, so I'm just gonna block this. I've got some guide coat on this as well. Now, this is a little bit too large a block for this area, but it doesn't really matter. We're painting this whole bedside and it's not any closer to the panel here by doing this, so. This is straight here. Now we got a little low area here. We might, so we have a little low area here, but this might be a little bit high. So we're gonna block it down a little bit more. See if this starts to, this guide coat starts to go away and this starts to straighten out. So I can feel there's extra filler right in here. I'm not pressing, I'm letting the, the block and the sandpaper do the work. Seeing that guide coat's disappearing now. Okay, now this feels pretty good. Very straight, we got a little bit of a low area here. We're gonna block this down and see if we need to put a little icing in there. There's a little bit of a low area here. We'll probably put a thin coat of icing right in this area. Other than that, this is ready to go. So we got our flexible block here. All right, so we're breaking through already. We got a low area here, so we'll need to put some glaze on this. Once again, 180 flexible block. There's a little bit more of a dent right there. Okay, so yeah, I didn't take the body filler out quite out far enough, so we're gonna put a little glaze coat over this. This is all straight, but there's a low area right here because that dent, that crease came out a little farther than I put my filler. Spray this down with some isopropyl alcohol, clean it, and then we'll apply a thin coat of icing over that spot, this one, and then there's a little wave right there we want to correct. This is the product we're using, the USC icing. This is a polyester finishing putty right here. It takes the same amount of hardener as a body filler and you mix it up the same way, but it's a smoother filler, a lighter filler, easy, easy to sand, and it's for small waves or imperfections. We've got a little low spot here that we want to fill and then a little low spot here. So let's mix this up. Mix it up till it's all one uniform color. Make sure you're scraping your spreader because some of that does not get mixed up. So you need to make sure you clean it off every so often so everything gets mixed up. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little small amount here like this and we're gonna smooth it right in here. And then I'm gonna do, there's a little low spot right here. So right here is a low spot. I didn't take my body filler far enough. So I'm just gonna put a small amount right over here. This has all been sanded with 180. So 180 is a coarse enough scratch <clears throat> to apply this glazing putty. And it's starting to harden up, so I need to move quickly. I need to put a little bit down here as well. Okay, we're gonna go through the process of straightening this dent on this tailgate. I pulled the dent out, I ground it down to bare metal. We applied some U-pull filler I sanded it with 80 grit sandpaper. Now some guys like to use 36 grit. They like to use 36 grit on their Bondo. I stay away from 36 grit. The scratches are just too deep and I don't feel like it's necessary with today's uh, products. So we use the U-pull filler. We ground it down to bare metal. Now it's not always necessary to grind it to bare metal. You can sand, you can apply filler over properly sanded paint. 
It's important to work through your progressions of sandpaper from 80 to a finer sandpaper all the way to 600 before you paint and apply your base coat. There is a personal preference in the progression of sandpapers you're using. Now, personally, what I like to use is 80 grit. Then I apply my body filler. I'll block my body filler with 80 again. And then if I have to apply another coat, then it has to be over an 80 grit scratch. So if I'm applying a polyester glazing putty such as icing, then I want that to go over a 180 grit scratch. And then I want to sand that with 180. And then 320 before we primer. We always want to sand everything with 320 before we apply our primer. I don't primer over any 180 grit scratches. So here I'm blocking over this icing with 180 grit sandpaper. And then once it's flattened out, we'll block over it with 320. Okay, so now I'm going to do the final sanding with some 320, remove some of those 180 grit scratches over the filler, and then we'll go around the edge of this with 320, remove those 180 grit scratches, and then we need to sand this entire panel with 600 grit. Okay, before we go ahead and start sanding this with 600, I want to look it over real good, make sure there's no di deep scratches or chips. I want to be aware of those before I start sanding this because we may need to do some additional sanding. Like we got a little scuff here, that'll come out with 600. But if we have any deep scratches, we need to know that they exist so we can correct those if we need to. Now there's a little bit of a deep scratch right there. Now I'll sand over that with 600, but now I know that scratch is there, so I can take a look at it after I sand it, make sure it's been removed before we paint and clear this. So let's wash this with some isopropyl alcohol, get it all clean, remove any wax or grease or anything that might contaminate the surface. We don't want to sand that into the surface. We want to clean it before we sand it. Okay, now it's all been cleaned. We're gonna go ahead and sand it with 800. I don't see any deep gouges or scratches that I need to be concerned about when prepping this out for paint. There is one scratch over here that we need to be aware of. We wanna make sure this scratch sands out. If it doesn't, we may have to put a little primer over it or something of that nature. So we'll sand this all, make sure everything's nice and smooth and ready for some primer. Yes, I'm sanding all these large areas with the orbital sander and some 800 grit sandpaper just for time savings. And then I'll go over it by hand and sand all those body lines. So you want to stay away from body lines when you're sanding with the orbital sander. You don't want any burn throughs in areas that you're not applying paint. All right, so we got uh, U-Pole 2K urethane primer over here. We'll put two coats over it. We'll put one coat on. Then you want to let it flash off for about 5, 10 to 15 minutes. It's really hot today, so it's going to be about 10 minutes. See, right there you can see this tip is it's not clean. It's not spraying correctly, so I need to clean this tip. All right, that's much better. You see it's spraying nice and clean now. My gun settings for the primer is 24 PSI on the air pressure. The fluid volume is two turns out from closed. I've got my fan pattern narrowed so I can be specific where, with where I apply this primer. This is the Viver gun and it has a 1.3 tip in it. I found that this primer was a little bit thick for that tip. So I switched over to the R500 gun for the second coat with a 1.5 tip. This repair is now ready for the next step, which is block sanding, paint, and clear coat. If you want to learn how to do that, check out this video now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we will see you next time on Garage Noise.